What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, it's just like a multi-purpose rain collection system with electric hose. If you want to know how do we built it, keep on watching. Let's get started. It may be summer and we won't have to worry about too much precipitation here in the Pacific Northwest, but that just means it's a perfect time to start implementing this rain barrel system because I won't get wet while building it. This is my downspout in my backyard, and unfortunately this downspout is going directly to my concrete patio below, making quite a bit of a mess. I want a way to capture all this rainfall over the entire year, but also make sure it's actually usable, which is why I'm gonna be attaching a spigot on the very bottom of this and encapsulating this in something that actually looks good versus a garbage pail. So, let's get started. The first step of this endeavor is to take a few measurements of this garbage bin. Now, if you just wanted to use this garbage bin and a few other miscellaneous items, you could easily make a rain barrel out of it. But I want to make sure this thing actually looks good because it's going to be sitting directly on my deck and very visible. So it needs to look good as well as take up as little space as possible. This bin is obviously going to be outside. So I'm using pressure treated four x four posts for proper support. There are going to be four corner posts on this build, and each post is going to be 30 inches long exactly. Once all four corners are measured and cut to the proper length, I then position them around our bin just to figure out a good game plan as to what size I can get away with, while also making sure it's not too snug for our garbage bin. In my personal thought process, the very front panel is the most important because the other sides are going to be more integrated into the front panel. In order to install our paneling more easily, I figured some cross bracing from post to post is gonna make it a lot easier. So I cut some pressure treated two by fours down to 20 inches, and that will give us the perfect width framework to enclose our bin. In order to secure our cross bracing more easily to our post, I grab our Craig pocket hole jig and pre-drill our holes ahead of time so it not only will make it easier to install, but our holes are completely flush and no fastener heads are going to get in the way of our paneling. I grab a pipe clamp and clamp down our bracing to our post. Now once I like the position, I then can start fastening and I did use the exterior Craig screws that came with the kit, but these actually didn't hold up very well. So I grabbed some Power Pro screws that were three inches long and the strength of those screws really did the job. Now that we have our first framework taken care of, we can now get to paneling. And for paneling, we are using six inch by half inch cedar paneling that you can generally find at your local Home Depot or hardware supply store. This is normally used for fencing, which is why the exterior is so rough, but it's perfect for any outdoor project like this. The paneling on this front face is 28 inches long, and you might want to give yourself an extra quarter inch just in case, but keep in mind I'm adding a half inch on both sides because I want to make sure that we have a nice butt joint once we install the side paneling. Once I have the correct center position of our first panel, I then secure it directly to our pressure treated lumber. Now I didn't install a bottom support brace because I didn't want it to get in the way of our spigot, which will be attached to our garbage bin eventually. I did however add this to check our cross dimensional measurement to guarantee that we have a perfectly square unit. Once we knew that our framework was square, we could then proceed to installing the rest of our panels. And once all of our panels are installed, we could then stand up our entire unit and start assembling our side framing. The only difference between the side framing and our center support framing is the size of our bracing in the middle. The one in the front is 20 inches, but the ones on the sides are only 15 inches. And that's because I want as narrow of a unit as possible so it takes up as little space as possible. I double check our measurements on both sides and then start cutting more cedar paneling. This paneling is also shorter, so instead of 28 inches, this side paneling is 22 inches long. As I begin to install these on a vertical surface, I do quickly realize that having them stable prior to screwing is much more desirable and easier to install, which is why I'm using a finish nailer and positioning the boards that way first and then moving on to screwing. 
As for securing our cedar paneling to our pressure treated lumber, I'm using PowerPro Premium Exterior Trim Screws. Now the really nice thing about these trim screws is that it has such a small head and it still provides considerable amount of hold strength, but you see the hole much less than you would with a normal head screw. You obviously still see the screw head, so you do want to make sure that they're all aligned properly. And in order to make that as easy as possible, I'm also using a laser level to guarantee that we have all these screw heads in alignment. Now that both sides are installed, I can then move on to the top portion. And these top panels are also 28 inches long. I installed them the same exact way. However, I do leave approximately a quarter inch of gap between these panels for proper ventilation. I wanted this unit as low as possible, which is why we have a small piece of cedar planking at the very bottom that I had to run through our table saw. These pieces are two inches thick, and by placing some shims at the very bottom, I'm quickly and easily able to get this bottom row fully installed. I obviously didn't have to sand this entire unit, but because it's going to be in a high traffic area and people are most likely going to be rubbing up against it or at least close to it, I want to make sure it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want any loose frayed cedar ends. For sanding, I'm using my heavy duty Bosch sander that has a random orbital mode as well as a turbo mode. And the turbo mode really does make this very quick and easy to do, but keep in mind that you want to make sure you don't have any swirl marks at the end, and in order to avoid that, I'm just using 220 grit sandpaper. Once we have this entire thing fully sanded down, it's time for finishing. And for finishing, I'm busting out this large Wagner spray tent, which will make quick work of spraying as well as protecting the surrounding areas. This thing has a footprint of 9 feet by 6 feet, which means it can accommodate our rain barrel screen or something much larger. As for finishing, we're going with Preserva wood, which is an oil stain and sealer all in one. This can has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while, which you can see here because there's clumps of stain or whatever you want to call that in the mix. So make sure it's very thoroughly mixed before you get to spraying. I unscrew the Wagner hopper and start immediately pouring our stain in. Unfortunately, I thought that I was too cool for school and decided I didn't need to put any protection down. Unfortunately, there was some drippage, so just make sure that you're pouring this away from your workpiece. However, there's something very special about this Wagner sprayer that's different than any other Wagner sprayer that I've used. Now, I've worked with many different Wagner sprayers, but on this project, we're working with a very special sprayer because this is battery operated. No plugins whatsoever, so we're able to spray anywhere we so desire without any cords getting in the way. Really nice and super beneficial when you're out in the elements. So, let's start spraying. Wagner is the sponsor of this week's video and I felt like this was a perfect project to feature this new innovative sprayer because it's perfect for medium to small size projects like this. This specific sprayer is called the Wagner Cordless Flexio 3550 18-volt paint and stain sprayer. It comes with a fine detail nozzle as well as a more powerful nozzle which I'm using here and it really does apply the finish extremely quickly and evenly as long as you have it in the right direction. That very first pass I didn't obviously and I repositioned it very quickly to make a much more fluid pass from here on out. If you want to check out Wagner's amazing product line for yourself then please make sure and check out the link in the description box below where you can find their amazing product line in store or online at Home Depot. As we wait for our stain and sealer to dry, I start adjusting our gutter system. And the gutter system that I have on this house is your normal standard PVC vinyl gutter system that you can generally find at any hardware store. The one thing you can't find at any general hardware store is this guy. This is a rainwater collection system that quickly and easily retrofits your existing gutter system into a rain collecting gutter system. After I cut and install the smaller section of pipe, I then insert the top mounted unit and then immediately insert the bottom unit. But the bottom unit actually does seem to be quite tight. So what I do is take my Wagner heat gun, heat that vinyl up just for a few seconds and insert that bottom flange quickly and easily into that hot vinyl. Heating up the vinyl will just allow it to stretch ever so slightly and then immediately cool into position. Once both pieces are installed on the gutter, I then just slide the top portion down, fitting perfectly into place. 
In order for our box to fit snugly up against our siding, I do have to cut out a small section of paneling, which is quick and easy to do as long as I take a few measurements ahead of time. I lay out my measurements with a speed square and then use my speed square and a jigsaw to perfectly notch out a nice hole for our gutter downspout. With that out of the way, I align our box with our gutter system and then figure out exactly where I want our hole to be placed in order to pipe in the rainwater to our garbage pail. I cut a hole directly through our siding, which is approximately an inch and a half, and proceed to align and cut a hole into our garbage pail at the same height. Now you can just shove the hole that comes with the kit into your siding and then into your garbage bin. However, I would suggest applying some type of filtration unit to your hose prior to installing because that way it collects any of the debris that might find its way into your pail since it is coming from your gutter system. I did do a quick hose test just to double check and make sure we didn't have any leaks, as well as obviously confirm that our rain water collection system was actually working properly. As you can see here, it was for sure working with zero leaks, but there is some debris at the very bottom, and that's why I applied a paint strainer to the hose eventually, which collects all that debris ahead of time. It's now finally time to add a spigot to our bin. Now, I'm gonna show you how I added a spigot here, but just keep in mind the fact that the water pressure from the spigot was extremely minimal. So much so that I had to rework my thinking in terms of a hose application for this unit because there was so little water pressure. In your application, if you're trying to just fill a water jug, this would be a perfect opportunity to use a spigot like this, which I'll leave a link for in the description box below, just like all the other tools and materials that you see in this video. As you can see in this real-time reaction, I was hoping for more, and this is all I got. It's a large gallon and container, but that's all I got, so I gotta figure out something different. Great. I made a quick executive decision to purchase a fountain pump on Amazon, and as I'm waiting for that to show up, I quickly install a few added accoutrement elements to our beautiful box. Now I want this again to be multi-purpose, so not just to be looking good, but to function in different ways. One being to add hooks to this unit so it can hang up our hose as well as our barbecue utensils. I pre-drilled a few properly sized holes into our box, and this is specifically areas where we have framing behind it, not just our paneling. I install some inexpensive but high quality hooks that can be utilized interiorly or exteriorly, and once those are installed, I can hang up all of my barbecue utensils. And luckily enough for our BYOT audience, our pump has just arrived, and all I have to do is hook it up to a half inch hose and insert that into the very bottom of our bin. I do place a piece of duct tape on the hose just to guarantee that that hose is not gonna go anywhere over time. And now that that's taken care of, I can reinstall the one piece of paneling that we removed to install the pump. And guess what? We are done. I truly love how this build eventually turned out. Not everything went to plan, but that's what happens when you do something for the very first time and try something new. With that said, it not only has to be functional with what it carries or what it holds on top of it, but does it actually work? Well, let's find out. All I had to do was grab the hose, plug it in, and away we went with watering this entire deck extremely quickly and efficiently with the water that is in our garbage pail. Yep, I did fill it up with water since it is the dead of summer, but I'm getting all these plants some much needed H2O. And that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah, 